Hi, I'm Mike Elam, and this is Buford Pusser, The Other Story. Back to Buford Pusser, the other story. Uh, here we're going to talk about uh, the raid at uh, the state line, Buford's first raid. Uh, you know, last time uh, we talked uh, quite a bit about Jack's death, uh, what all happened there. Uh, joining me this evening is Chuck Puckett. Uh, Chuck uh, had the privilege of uh, interviewing Rex Armstead on several occasions and uh, learned quite a bit of the story from him. Uh, Chuck, how are you doing tonight? Doing good, doing good. A little okay. cool down here in South Arkansas, but it's nice May day, May night. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, uh, I think both of us agree that had uh, James Dickey not been killed, uh, in that auto accident that he probably would have been reelected as incumbents usually are. And, uh, you know, both Toehead and Pusser had a reason to want Dickey out of the way. Pusser mm -hmm. so that he could become sheriff and um, Toehead, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I've got a document here. This is the uh, Ray letter. Uh, H.M. Ray was a prosecutor, um, or actually a U.S. attorney uh, based there in Corinth, and he was asking for help with getting uh, Toehead investigated. And, you know, uh, I think the thing is with that is that Toehead knew he was being investigated and uh, knew that James Dickey was being in, investigated. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, this document says that uh, James Dickey was involved with moonshiners and, uh, you know, he was just part of that community. And that uh, I believe Toehead probably thought that if uh, Ray proceeded with Dickey's prosecution, that he might just well roll over on uh, on him and uh, tell what all Toehead was up to at the uh, state line and uh, create a lot of problems for Toehead. So there you have it, that uh, Pusser and, and Toehead both needed Dickey eliminated, and thus they had the car wreck. Uh, don't know that that's what actually happened, uh, that they actually eliminated him, but in the letter, uh, Dickey says that he sees it as a, a very distinct possibility. Uh, mm -hmm. Before I go on, you know, I mentioned that uh, you talked to Rex Armstead quite a bit. Uh, Can you tell us mm -hmm. something about Rex, um, you know, uh, things that you discussed with him uh, in relation oh, sure. to the state line? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he uh, became a state trooper in 64, so that's, you know, he was kind of got in there at the start of that, you know, when all that was going on. Uh, you know, he would, uh, he he always laughed about Pusser, you know, he always said, you know, uh, Pusser was guilty. Uh, one of the things he always liked to say was Pusser would steal a cook stove, come back a week later and try to steal the smoke. And he said, just crook with a badge, that's <laughs> what he said. 
Um, you know, before I get into that, though, I just wanted to make a point, too. You always wonder if uh, – now, Barbara said this, you know, if I remember right. She, she said, you know, she may, she said that Pusser went to the state line as soon as he was elected. And he demanded $1,000 a month. And he said uh, – I think she said, y'all bet on the wrong horse. So I just wonder, you know, she kind of said that uh, she always thought that uh, Louise and Toehead wanted to keep Dickie or at least Louise because they knew what they had with him. And, you know, they had a good thing with him. They didn't know about these other guys. They didn't think Pusser could beat him anyway. That's what, you know, I think Barbara implied. But, you know, like I say, you talked to some others too to kind of talk different about that. But, um, yeah, Rex, uh, like I say, he, he was there at the state line a lot. Um, he knew Toehead. Uh, he had dealings with Toehead before Toehead went to the state line when he was a deputy there in Coma County. You know, he's, he's a troublemaker before he got to state line, <laughs> Toehead was. Um, I don't think he really knew Junior Smith, but Toehead was pretty notorious. Um, I know, uh, uh, you know, when they had the raid at the state line that you're talking about, you know, uh, yeah. there, uh, when was that? And, uh, not long after Pusser took office. When that was December, in late January? December of 64. Right, right in there. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Rex, I remember he had told me, he said that, uh, Warren Jones and the, uh, what was the other TBI guy named Sloan, Steve Sloan? John Sloan. Or? John Sloan. Okay. He said they both told him they got to get Pusser off the street. So he's dirty. He said they had a good uh, idea. He was selling street drugs when he was sheriff, uh, you know, payoffs, things like that. And uh, he said they have told the higher ups, Jones, you know, told Rex that, and nothing's ever done. They never would investigate him, look at him. And they knew every time they raided the state line, it was like they knew they were coming. And so they knew something was going on. It was legal going on somewhere. And they pretty much, I think, all do it was Pusser, I think, which was, you know, pretty easy to tell. Uh, but, you know, Pusser never raided them. I mean, he never did. And he kind of got put two and two together there. If you're a sheriff and you want to make the news for, you know, being this big crime fighter, don't you go hit the, you know, the worst place probably in your county? You know, it never got yeah. done. But uh, he said they lured Pusser. Y'all go ahead, Mike. Oh, I'll, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. He said they lured Pusser to Jackson, Tennessee. And it was under the guise of, uh, you might want to say, intelligence sharing. Uh, the reason they did that line, they didn't want him to know about it because every time they let him know about it, it was like he would call them, no, hey, clean up, they're coming. So they get him up there, and when he finds out they're going to raid the state line, Rex said, boy, he got nervous. I mean, Rex's uh, phrase was he was nervous as a whore in church and said that he, you could tell he was trying to get to a phone. Well, Rex would stay on him, you know, some other guys. I think most of Rex make sure he couldn't get to a phone. Rex likes to needle people. It's always, in, you know, he likes to needle even people he like, but like Pusser, if you can imagine a guy with a Delta accent like Pusser, anything that ends like in Pusser or liquor or trigger sounds like UH. They call Pusser. Hey, Pusser, you dirty boy. You dirty. You taking pals, Pusser? You dirty cop, Pusser. You smell dirty boy. I mean, you know, mess with him like that. And uh, I asked one time, I said, man, well, you, well, you know, don't you think you get tired of that and jump on you? He said, he jump on me. You know what he's going to get. You know, so that's right that. But anyway, they drive down there, and I think he said him and Puss were in the same car. And he said, man, they swooped in on that state line, perfect grade. They never knew what hit them. I mean, it just went off perfect. And said, boy, Louis come out there screaming and cussing up Puss from one side to the other. Of course, he couldn't say nothing. I couldn't call you. They're all over me, you know, or anything like that. But, yeah, oh, man, he, he's – and that, that's why it worked, because they lured him up there, and he couldn't call them. So that yeah, it is, right it there, is yeah, kind I, of amazing that uh, – you know, Pusser mm -hmm. is supposed to be this big crime fighter now. You know, he did raid the uh, state line when he was constable, but he was out of his jurisdiction. Right, sure and according to Carl Pusser, uh, <laughs> that was just a ploy yeah. Yeah. to garner some right. votes during the election. They knew that mm -hmm. everything was going to be thrown out, mm -hmm. that it didn't have yeah. any standing in the court. But uh, mm -hmm. this was different. After Pusser gets right. elected, he goes through four mm -hmm. months and doesn't approach the state line until Rex Armistead, mm -hmm. the state of Mississippi, the state of Tennessee, uh, Alcorn County, mm -hmm. you know, like you say, all get him up right. there uh, in Jackson for this uh, intelligence briefing, uh, <laughs> which is, like you said, was just a right. guise to uh, have him up there in a controlled circumstance where that they could uh, be with right. him all the time, raid the place. And it caught Louise off guard. 
So, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that people have been misled on. You know, I've read that uh, uh, Rex and Toehead grew up together and mm -hmm. that they were friends in childhood, <laughs> but yet there's a six year age difference. And right, sure is, yeah. And um, I don't think uh, when they were young like that, uh, with that much of an age difference, that they would have been close friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, Toehead came to the state line when um, he was still in, you know, like uh, 17 years old, 16, 17 years old. So, uh, right. Armistead would have been quite a bit older. Than him. Gee, uh, Toehead was right. I'm trying to think. Toehead was actually, I think the county was Tallahatchie County, and Rex was from uh, Cahoma. I think that's Cahoma County where Lula is. Now, they were neighboring counties right there, of course, but first time Rex had contact with Toehead really was uh, when he broke in that grocery store and the owner shot him with a shotgun, remember? And yes. he was eating some bologna, I think. And uh, yeah, he jumped bail sandwich. or something. They let him out. He fled, I think. For, yeah, he bought himself. <laughs> yeah. And uh, anyway, the Rex was a deputy at that time, that county, and he told the you know sheriff and then said, "Hey, y'all go find this guy." You know, he went up and that's really was his first contact with him. That's where he met D. Uh, told his, I think, I don't know if they were married. They were together a lot, but uh, supposedly that's where they he met were her. Married, yeah. And uh, but, yeah, right. Supposedly they were married. Yeah, I don't know how long or when or they were married at that time. But uh, yeah, they were they weren't childhood friends. They didn't you know had any association. And you know, like I say, until that you know when uh, Toehead was arrested for, for breaking that store, they didn't blow his sandwich. You know, so but now they had no alliance. Matter of fact, uh, the lady that wrote the Dixie Mafia book claimed that you know she said they had an alliance. And uh, Rex, I never had any alliance with Toehead. Said I've never even met uh, Darlene Kerr. Don't even know her. Said right. she may have you know. You know, being at, uh, uh, you know, she never been to my house. I, as far as I know, I've never met her, you know. Well, as I understand it, that she worked for an attorney's office that uh, represented a lot of the uh, Dixie Mafia mm -hmm. members. And that's where she gained all of her knowledge. Right, about. she did. Yeah. Um, I think so, yeah. yeah. You, you know, yeah, to me, it's... Uh, to me, we get back to the point, it's just kind of striking that uh, uh, Buford is in office for four months before he ever raids the uh, uh, state line. And then after that, I don't believe he ever raids them again. Yeah. Do you have any knowledge of him ever going back down and raiding the state line after that time? I don't know. I don't think he ever did. Uh, or did I? Can you see me, Mike? Yes, I can. You're on. Okay, well, okay, that's fine. I can't see you. Okay, that's fine. But uh, no, as far as I know, he never uh, went back down the state line. Uh, well, I guess, you know, the game was kind of over, too. You know, like I say, he killed Louise there, and he tried to get find all her money. I don't think he got a, a cent of it. No. <laughs> You know, and I guess for any reason, you know, uh, Toehead would have lived. He may have raided a few more times. Who knows, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I was trying to think, too. Um, all, uh, um, now, Rex and Toehead, they would get together and meet some. You know, Rex said it was always his pumping him for information. He'd try to pump him for information. Sometimes Toehead, he'd want to know what Rex knew. And... Sometimes, you know, uh, Rex won't know what he knew or was going on. They kind of, you know, play each other that way. But but they understood the relationship. Rex knew he was outlaw and totally knew Rex would nail his butt, you know, if he ever caught him doing anything. <laughs> so, yeah. You know. Uh, you know, when uh, they did raid the state line, of course, uh, mm -hmm. they found uh, some booze in Louise's uh a pickup truck and mm -hmm. uh, a little bit in the right. trunk of her car. And uh, of mm -hmm. course, on the Mississippi side, they were raiding that at the uh, identical time. And uh, right, right. that involved the restaurant, uh, you know, right. where uh, the Mississippi authorities mm -hmm. and, you know, they confiscated some uh, shaved dice and, you know, they arrested uh, uh, a few people, uh, Ed Edward Coleman, 
uh, Bobby Floyd, Clyde mm -hmm. Jim Lake, and W.O. Right. And uh, I don't know that anything mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. happened to any of them. Uh, they said that uh, Cleeton Wilbank said that he was going to. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, with uh, having gambling devices, but, you know, there's nothing really happened there either. Uh, right. No, yeah. no. But the Tim, yeah. Oh, Tim Link, I, I, they had some connections to power. I don't think anything much happened to Tim Link. So, you know, uh, that was, you know, those, what was, uh, oh, Clyde's brother that was pretty heavy. Uh, uh, Nelson? Uh, Nelson, right, yes. Yeah, I, I don't think much would happen to them on that side. I yeah. think they had connections and went up to Jackson probably. You know, Louise, Jackson, uh, Louise did lose two vehicles out of the deal. Right. Uh, right. She sent she uh, mm -hmm. uh, one of her friends to Nashville to try and buy them mm -hmm. back in uh, uh, the state auction. Hayward right. King went up there with a bag full of money. He was able to get her uh, mm -hmm. 1962 pickup back, mm -hmm. but he got outbid mm -hmm. for the Cadillac. I'm told that she just turned around and bought another new Cadillac to replace it. Uh, right. Toehead yeah. wasn't there at the time of the race. Do it. Right. right. Yeah, there's no telling where he was. <laughs> you know, he was all over that dude was. Oh, he was. He but you've seen his, uh, you know, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You mentioned his FBI file, you know, as big as Sears Robot catalog, you know. Man. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, close to 500 pages in depth. Oh, yeah. And think about that. He only be 30 what 32 he would have been 33 if he lived that December I think but 32 and had a FBI file that big man you know he he was he was something I um but you know when uh I would like say I, I still wonder though if uh they really yeah now go ahead oh I was just gonna say you know uh uh kind of like we established last time in the uh, last Mm -hmm. uh, episode of this uh basically toehead just saw the state line as an avenue to bigger things for him uh, you know he was getting involved in sure, the three state sure, moonshine sure. operation mm -hmm. he was wanting to bring mm -hmm. drugs right. down onto the scene uh you know and jack had never right. allowed uh mm -hmm. moonshine mm -hmm. to be sold right. there because that was a federal right. offense and you're getting some serious yeah. prison time for that yeah. where if you just sold bootleg yeah. all that was going to happen is yeah. you were going to yeah. get a slap on the right. wrist pay a small fine and lose your inv inventory mm -hmm. yeah. but uh yeah yeah you don't want to mess with the feds yeah they they tend not to you know totally didn't give a flip jack jack played the safe he was i would say he was probably one of the smarter guys up there really you know well you know he was said uh, to be a you know, as far as knowing how to play it he, he was said to be illiterate, yeah. but there's a difference between uh, not being able to read and write <laughs> and uh, having street smarts. And Jack That's had right. street smarts yeah. because he, he knew is, just yeah. how far he could uh, push things. Yeah, uh, yeah, he yeah he had street smarts. There's no doubt about it. You know something too? I was thinking about. You know, there was a rumor going around that Dickie and Louise were messing around. Did you ever hear that? Or oh yeah, yeah, that uh, yeah. That makes me think too that, yeah. Uh, well, maybe that's another reason why I told him I might have wanted Dickie gone, you know. Could be. Uh, yeah. He may have seen Dickie as some kind of interference. Because no, he's looking, hey, if I move in on, yeah. And no, you know, Dickie, you know, like they say, they say he was ill with cancer, probably wouldn't live much longer, but. You know, he, he might have stayed after Toehead and got him on something, sent him to prison. You never know if he would have lived, you know, and he didn't like Toehead mess around with Louise, you know, you never know. Uh, well, I, I look at it and think uh, that had Dickie not been killed and mm -hmm. if H.M. Ray had been successful in uh, prosecuting him, that Dickie mm -hmm. might have looked at it and said, hey, you know, I've got cancer. I don't have long I don't want to die in prison. And um, that would have been every reason for him to roll over on Toehead. And so I think that that had a lot right. to do with uh, 
uh, Dickey being killed. And of course, at the same time, uh, you know, Towhead and Pusser knew each other uh, long oh, before sure. this. And oh, yeah. uh, I think that uh, Towhead probably looked at it and just said, hey, we've got an opportunity here to get rid of Dickey mm -hmm. and just put another mm -hmm. player in place that mm -hmm. we can control. And I don't think that they knew just how uh, much of a a type personality that Buford was, uh, as well as uh, Towhead being the same way. Both of them thought that they were going to run things. Yeah. And I think that's yeah, yeah. probably where they had a falling out. Yeah, yeah, it's not a good mix. You get two alphas together. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you know and two. You, you wonder, and it, I think it says a lot too. Puster must have had some connection because H.M. Ray, they like I say he, you know, they Dicky was like I say fixed to be indicted. I mean, you know, Puster's doing more stuff than Dicky, and they knew it. Yeah, you know, so that's just saying something there. You know, hey, <laughs> it really you know, does. I mean, it, it's pretty bad. It's TBI guys, you know, Sloan and Jones know it, and they say we tell the higher ups they don't, they're doing nothing about it. You know? Yeah. Well, hey, we don't have much more time, so I'm going to be, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm going to be cutting it off yeah. here. But, uh, you know, I, okay, Matt. I talk about this in, in my book, Buford Pusser, The Other Story. Uh, I want to encourage mm -hmm. everybody to go over to the Facebook page uh, where we try to lay all this out, uh, tell the story. There's a lot of files there, a lot of pictures there, a lot of documentation. Uh, just an interesting thing to uh, check out. But I think in this next episode, what we're going to do is just kind of move it along a little bit up the road because, uh, you know, we can talk all night about the raid, but then you've still got a short span of time right. there when uh, uh, Towhead was still at the state line, got caught up in the uh, right. uh, red carpet casino robbery, got caught up in the... Uh, Three State Moonshine mm -hmm. operation, and uh, his world just kind of came down on him. Mm -hmm. But we'll get back together and be talking about that. Yeah. Anything else that you've got okay, to offer in, a, in about a minute? <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> not really. We covered a lot of it, you know. But like I say, that there just was no lines between Towhead and and, Put and uh, Rex Armistead. There never was, and uh, you know, like I say, most every cop that ain't dealing with Pusser knew. He was crooked. And, you know, like Barbara said, Puster said the same thing. Puster would walk around with articles in his newspaper, about uh, newspaper articles in his pocket, and he'd pull out, hey, you see what they wrote about me in this paper? <laughs> so he would do stuff like that, yeah. you know. He, full of himself. But, uh, you know, and, and yeah, he was full of himself, yeah. You know, that's why that's why Rex like gave him such a hard time. Oh, boy, he'd like, he'd like to needle him. He get him some mad, you know. They say, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Chuck, I appreciate you being here tonight. We'll have you back yeah. again when we talk. Well, about thanks for inviting me, Mike. Stuff. Appreciate. And yeah, uh, appreciate it, Mike. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, appreciate you being here. We'll talk to you thanks, next Mike. time. Yes, sir. You be careful. Okay. Bye bye.